Taste the feeling. For total home pest control, who are you going to call? Call the bug man. 923-BUGS. For total pest control for your home or business, call the original Salvant. Call the bug man today. 923-BUGS. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. Good morning and welcome to Hour 1 of the Monday edition of the Clarence Bug Show. Here's hoping that your weekend was an absolutely fabulous one, as we like to say each and every Monday. If not, good Lord willing, you will still be here when the next one rolls our way. We start today's show, obviously, talking about more COVID-19 pandemic information. And for many students, particularly in high school, juniors, seniors, financial aid is a huge concern right now. A lot of uncertainty surrounding what's available, what's not available, how COVID-19 will affect all of this. So we start today's show with three segments dealing with education. First and foremost, financial aid. We start with Dr. Suwan Bute, the executive director of the Louisiana Office of Student Financial Aid. Dr. Bute, good morning and how are you today? Good morning, well and you? I am doing well, thank you for asking. For many seniors in high school, FAFSA is a huge concern right now. For the uninitiated, what exactly is FAFSA? Thank you for that. The FAFSA stands for the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. Uh, focus on that word free, uh, meaning as a watchword, you should never have to pay to file this form. So, speaking of filing that form, uh, what are the ways to file the FAFSA? Two major ways. Log on, students and families log on to fafsa.gov, and that's important because there are imposter sites. Uh, that will charge you and say, hey, we're going to get you your money faster. Don't fall for that. Or there's actually a FAFSA app. So for that, it's at My Student Aid. That's what that mobile app is called. So you can file on your phone or you can file online. Now, I seem to remember that uh, it's also possible to file in conjunction when you file your taxes. Is that correct? Well, what was great about this is it's a financial aid term called prior prior year right so you the FAFSA right now uses your 2018 taxes okay. the reason that's done is to allow students and families to get that form done earlier because by now in 2020 right you should definitely have filed your 2018 taxes you may not have filed your 2019 taxes yet so 2018 tax return is what this year's FAFSA will be based upon Obviously, when we are talking about the likes of the pandemic that we're facing right now, thousands of people and families affected in that regard. What about families that have a member that's been affected by COVID-19 or some other illness and find themselves right now facing 
e extraordinary medical expenses? Fantastic question. Um, 2018 taxes, a lot has changed, to your point, since that time. So if a family is facing, uh, God forbid, medical expenses due to COVID-19, but that's not all, you recall the tornadoes, the severe weather. Maybe they had property damage that was not covered by insurance. Maybe there's been job loss. Maybe there's been a significant loss to income for the business. All of these things are significant changes that happened from 2018 to 2019. Mm -hmm. And the bottom line for that is the student needs to contact, their family needs to contact their financial aid office at the institution that they plan to attend. They need to ask for something called special consideration. But help the school help you in documenting whatever the cause of these major expenses and changes are communicate with the school to ask them what type of documentation you're going to need, right? And then present that and ask for special consideration. And there may be aid, uh, there may be a change in that family situation that allows them aid where folks who didn't get aid before may actually qualify to aid for aid. Speaking of changes, one of the big changes uh, that we've seen from education circles here in Louisiana is dealing with the pass, no pass rules. Whereas before, we went strictly by grades that were earned throughout the entire semester. Will grade performance this semester affect TOPS? Okay, and we have to separate that one. So okay. if you're a high school student, right, let's say I'm a high school senior, mm -hmm. and the qualifications for TOPS, the 2.5 grade point average for the opportunity level and the tech level, uh, the completion of the core, uh, the completion of the ACT, those requirements haven't changed. So let's give an example of a high school senior who has a 2.49 mm -hmm. grade point average on the core. Okay. If that student accepts a P grade, right? The P grade will help them earn that unit of the core because they pass the class. Mm -hmm. What won't it help them do? It will not help that 2.49 come up to a 2.5, and we do not round for top eligibility. So that's a decision that you really, families really need to look carefully at. If that GPA is where it needs to be, then that P grade doesn't hurt you for the core. It does if your GPA is on the bubble. What about ACT qualifying scores? Has any adjustment been made in that regard? Yes, actually it has. Thanks to the commissioner and thanks to the governor and, and the talks that they've had, the ACT is still a requirement for top. However, before students would have to get that ACT score by the April ACT test date or face a penalty, the governor's actually, through Proclamation 41, extended that timeline through September 30th. And that student has until September 30th to get that qualifying score, and that penalty has been waived. So this is good news for students who either don't have a score or were trying to get a higher score. Now, you know, what about students that already have a score? Uh, we've often been asked, is LASPA going to process on time? Yes, we're going to process on time. That will start uh, the second week in June. And what will we do? We will run processing based on the GPA, the ACT, and the core that we have. Let's say that you, we process you and you get another score. You do get a higher score by September 30th, or you get a score and you didn't have one before, then we will reprocess those students and make those adjustments. What about documentation? How important is it going to be to document everything along this journey to financial aid? Uh, critical. You know, same word repeated three times, document, 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 because you, you can't show up with special consideration with no documentation in hand. So for those students that feel as though special consideration because significant financial changes from 2018 to 2019, it's important that they document, but it's also important that they contact their financial aid office at the school to determine what does that mean to the financial aid office, like what type of documentation is acceptable. If, Dr. Boutte, by chance, a student has to take, because of COVID-19, summer school courses, will that affect TOPS or financial aid in any way? Well, if they're a senior, let's say, and you did not finish that core, you needed to get that GPA up and you're going until the summer, that's fine. 
because the academic year for TOPS eligibility ends on August 31st, right? So as long as that student has not graduated from high school, right, and they're taking summer school, then we will process that student after we receive those updated grades from summer school. Note that no, can I process that student in June? You wouldn't want me to, but you know, I, I could. <laughs> if you haven't completed the core, then it's not going to run through. So the processing may be delayed because we have to wait on that core to be completed. But yes, that's the consideration. Because of the COVID-19 pandemic, a lot of things in education, financial aid, so on and so forth, are, are in a state of flux. As best you can tell, are all current rules for universities, quote, set in stone, or are they willing, if you reach out to them, to work with individuals based on what their individual circumstances may be? Yes, that, that is going to vary by institution to institution, as you just said. We are seeing examples of institutions working with students. So again, contact the financial aid office uh, at the school that you're attending, see what their policies are, See what documentation is required. Help them to help you. What about juniors? Any advice that you can give to them uh, not knowing exactly when school will resume, if this resurfaces again in the fall? Any steps that juniors can take to get themselves, quote, ahead of the game? Continue to do the best job that you possibly can under these circumstances. The GPA counts. The, the core that you're taking counts. Uh, continue to put yourself in the best position. Once this new normal, you know, comes to play, then you need to be ready, right? I, I have a coworker that says, if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. Right. I think that's the best advice to juniors. Stay ready, be on point, do your best. So how can we find out more about the Louisiana Office of Student Financial Aid? You can go to mylasta.la.gov. We have several ways. We are on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, we have virtual office hours now from 9 to 4. So students can go to mylasta.la.gov, click on resources. They can actually schedule appointments for virtual office hours. They can also text us for assistance. So we are here to help, and we know that a lot has changed. What hasn't changed? The FAFSA is still your one-stop shop for application for GO, application for TOPS, application for Pell Grant, work study, federal student loans. And the other thing that is certain is LOSP is here to help and we're going to be here to help. We're going to get through this together. Dr. Suwan Butte, Executive Director of the Louisiana Office of Student Financial Aid, thank you so very much for the time and more important, thank you all for working overtime to be sure that our kids get the maximum benefit and we can continue to educate the workforce here in the state of Louisiana. You are most welcome, and thank you for helping to get the word out. We truly appreciate it. It's critical during this time. You're quite welcome. Thank you kindly. It is something very important, and of course, you can never start too soon. And please, again, remember those three important words. Actually, they are the same word, but use them three times. Document, document, document. And if you have any questions at all, make it a point to reach out to your respective institutions of higher learning. Make them aware of what your potential pitfalls may be in this journey for you. And uh, as Dr. Butte said, they are in many cases willing to work with you in that regard. The old adage, nothing beats a failure but a try, comes to mind. And if you do that, hopefully, when all is said and done, you'll be ready to go. All right, uh, Marty. All right, we'll take a quick time out get this out of the way, and we'll come back with more education-related news on the COVID-19 pandemic, right where you've got it, here on the Clarence Bug Show on the Pelican. Stay close. Hello, guys, it's Debbie. It's time, I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. 
Exiles from what you ask? Exiled from the radio. But now, we're on your television. I'm Bill Perfita. He's Kevin Gallagher. And they kicked us to the curb. But we're back. We are back with Exiles Television on the Pelican Broadcasting Network. We're going to bring you the newsmakers. We're also going to take your calls and give you great information. It's going to be the best damn radio show on television. Look for it on your cable system or download the app, pelicansportstv.com. Live and play on the fairway at Greystone Golf and Country Club, a serene, challenging golf destination located in Denham Springs. For tee times and membership opportunities, go to greystonecountryclub.com. From appetizers, pasta dishes, and entrees, La Cantea takes pride in preparing all the Italian cuisine we know you love. Enjoy live music every Thursday through Saturday from 6 to 9, happy hour weekdays from 3 to 6, and brunch on Sundays from 11 to 2, as well as dinner portion-sized lunch specials for under $10. Visit our website to view our menu and book a party or meeting in our large banquet room. Once you try La Contea, your Italian dining will change forever. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances. You're dependable, independent. Depend on us for service, for selection, for price. Get huge Whirlpool savings. Shop now and save on Whirlpool appliances throughout the store. Plus, experience our price match guarantee. And ask about special financing. You can depend on the know-how of people who live appliances every day. Bolello's Furniture and Appliances. You're dependable, independent, with nationwide buying power. Welcome back for segment two of the Monday edition of the Clarence Bug Show. With all the uncertainty surrounding uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, we thought it would be appropriate for those that are in education circles, students getting ready to graduate high school, college students already enrolled, so on and so forth, if we help to disseminate information regarding education and how the pandemic has affected all of these things. So for segment two, we start with the university that's gotten ahead of the game. Southern University deciding already that the summer semester will be held entirely online. Tip of the hat to Southern University for getting ahead of the game and allowing students to be able to plan their time accordingly. Edward Willis is the Vice Chancellor of Student Affairs and Enrollment Management and joins us to start this segment. Mr. Willis, good morning and how are you, sir? Good morning, Mr. Buck. It's great to be with you and uh, look forward to our conversation. So what considerations went into making this decision and Southern getting ahead of the game? Yes. Uh, so here at Southern University, certainly with this uh, COVID-19 issue uh, uh, ever-changing and certainly unpredictable, uh, we wanted to uh, encourage our students to begin to think about uh, long-term uh, their educational journey. And so uh, we, we focus on our, our students who are currently enrolled with us, but not only that, but the students who potentially would be Southern uh, University students in the future. And so as a result of that, uh, we wanted to make sure we had information out there early and often about what we were planning to do. And so uh, with the unpredictability, we made a decision to keep uh, all of our courses online for the summer uh, that would allow students to do that planning necessary uh, to be prepared to uh, certainly advance their, their, their educational journey. And so uh, that was a primary driver in ensuring that that would take place. One of the hallmarks of Southern University is serving the community and the, the students that are enrolled there. Obviously, making this decision as early as you did makes it easier for students now to plan for the summer and not be left in limbo. That is, that is, that is correct. You know, certainly with our students who are currently with us, uh, they're already involved in the online environment us having gone to that like many universities did uh, probably somewhere around mid-March. Uh, so they've already been engaged in the online uh, environment and are currently involved in that right now as they finish off the spring term. 
And so just as a continuation of them already being geared up to do work in that environment, we just extended that into the summer so that they continue their studies. Uh, certainly there's some adjustment that some of our students, you know, certainly needed to make to, to transition to the online environment. And so uh, we, you know, you know, the notion around uh, how do I navigate this for the summer and how do I continue to keep uh, uh, engage academically, uh, the summer becomes a great opportunity to, to continue to stay on schedule and on course for progression and ultimately graduation from Southern. We started our show today speaking with Dr. Suwan Butte, the Executive Director of the Louisiana Office of Student Financial Aid. Obviously, Southern University is working with them and others. What about applying? registering, securing financial aid. Is all of that being accessible online for Southern students as well? Absolutely. And in fact, that those portals are now open on our website and have been. So you can uh, certainly apply for admissions if you're a new student. You can register for classes if you're a new or continuing returning student. And you can apply for financial aid for the summer as well. So all of those portals are uh, up and available and, and are ready to go. And so uh, someone can do that right now. You can go online and, and, and apply. And we really encourage you to do that to, to, to really get ahead of the game. So this is an opportunity to either as a student, if you're a continuing student, to sort of catch up if you need to do that or either stay on pace or certainly get ahead uh, if you're a new student and also a returning student. It provides all of those options uh, for you. And so we really encourage uh, our students and, and, and other potential students to do that as well. Uh, listen, we'll even take students uh, who, who are not uh, uh, currently Southern students who want to take some classes to get ahead at the, the universities that they're already at uh, to take summer classes as well. You can always transfer those back if you need to do that. But uh, so we're, we're online and available for all of our students. So when will the Baton Rouge uh, semester begin? And uh, are you anticipating uh, overwhelming numbers? Is it, is it in the best interest of students to get into the process as soon as possible? Uh, it absolutely is, is, uh, makes sense to, to engage as early as possible because you want to make sure that you're, you're all set up and ready to go once the uh, summer session begins. So we're, we're accepting uh, registration uh, and applications all, all the way up till June 1st. Uh, and you could go online and do that. Uh, the summer uh, session is an eight-week session. We'll begin on June 8th and will end on July 30th. So that's June 8th that the semester will begin uh, and will run through July 30th. Uh, and you have until June 1st to uh, apply and, uh, and or register. I, uh, as a former member of the Southern University Human Jukebox, uh, I know that there are a number of students there uh, that depend on financial aid, work study, things of that nature. Is there any more urgency for students that take part in institutions like the Human Jukebox, uh, athletics, things of that nature, for them to apply ASAP? Oh, absolutely, because again, uh, the, the, the scheduling aspect it becomes particularly important. When you're a student and you're actively involved in a major uh, 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 extracurricular function on the campus, as you know, uh, being a former member of the uh, jukebox, the great jukebox, you know, you certainly uh, need to plan out your schedule so that you can afford them opportunity for practicing and, and getting ready for those for those particular functions uh, and to engage in those in a meaningful way. And so you want to make sure your schedule coincides uh, and is fully uh, uh, prepared so that it allows you uh, that flexibility and freedom to do uh, and be engaged in that, that additional extracurricular work. So, so we want you to do that early so you can plan out your schedule much more effectively. The, and who knows, you know, this, this certainly this a pandemic could, could uh, and we're hoping that, that it eases and ends, you know, relatively soon. And once that happens and we get back to a normal schedule, we want you already set up so then you just smoothly move right into uh, your engagement beyond even the classroom. 
Uh, the late, great Dr. Isaac Patty Griggs would not forgive me if I did not say that uh, often imitated but never duplicated the Southern <laughs> University Marching Band. I absolutely understand that. <laughs> so how can we find out more for students that want to start the process as soon as possible? Right, right. So if you would just go to uh, the uh, Southern University website, all of the information is right there for you, www.subr.edu. That's www.subr.edu. Uh, and all of the information is right there and available to you. Just click on admissions or registration, and it'll take you right to the site and would allow you to engage uh, and navigate uh, as, as needed. And, and we're, we're always up there to help you. Uh, if for some reason we have frequently asked questions on that website that will help navigate you through the process as well if there's some contact information uh, where you can ask questions or either give us a call and we'll be happy to respond to uh, whatever questions, concerns at all that you may have. Our aim is to get you registered uh, or admitted uh, and get you uh, 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 ready to go. By the way, I would also mention even for our new students, we, are, we have planned to do orientation for new students virtually, online. That can happen. So we're, going to, we're in a position where we can take care of you and service you in any way that, that's needed. Edward Willis is the Vice Chancellor of Student Affairs and Enrollment Management for Southern University. Mr. Willis, thank you so much for the time and more important, Thanks Southern University for getting ahead of the game and making this new reality as easy to navigate as possible as you continue in your mission of serving Louisiana and the students that Southern University is famous for servicing. We appreciate that sincerely, my friend. Thank you so much and uh, go on our line and register for classes uh, right now. We're, we're ready for you and go Jags. Go Jags. Thank you kindly, Mr. Willis. By the way, um, Southern University, New Orleans, the summer session is May 26th through July 21st. For more info, go to www.suno.edu. For the Shreveport campus, there are three summer sessions. Session one is an eight-week class segment. It is June 1st to July 30th. Session two is a four-week session, June 1st to June 30th, and session three is a four-week session as well, July 1st to July 30th. For more info, go to susla.edu. And finally, the acclaimed Southern University Law Center's summer session will be held June 2nd to July 18th. For more information, you can go to SULC, as in Southern University Law Center, .edu. All of this ready. The portals are all up and open, so there is no excuse. Students, you can't, you can't procrastinate and buy any more time out of this. Southern University is there. They are open and ready to help and assist you. When we come back, we'll continue talking a little more about education, and we'll have the opportunity to talk with a friend to all of Louisiana, all of education, and a personal friend as well, one who, by the way, is battling COVID-19. We'll speak with Hollis Milton, superintendent of schools for the award-winning West Feliciana Parish School System when we come back, right where you've got it, on the Clarence Bug Show here on the Pelican. Stay close. Hi, I am Dr. Farrell Frugier, Jr., and I am a general dentist at Frugier Family Dentistry. I was born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I went to Catholic High School, LSU, and LSU School of Dentistry in New Orleans, where I received my DDS degree in 1986. I always have and will continue to be committed to continuing my education, to invest in technology, which makes the diagnosis and delivery of dentistry more thorough, more comfortable, and more aesthetically pleasing. In our practice, we are here to serve the patients. We want to improve their quality of life and to develop relationships with our patients. In dentistry, we have a chance to impact lives on a daily basis, not just by doing dentistry, but by getting to know them and being a part of their life. We also believe in giving back to our community. So every year, we give back to the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank, Toys for Tots, and Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. 
please stop by and visit our office. We would love to take care of you and your family. Hello guys, it's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. For total home pest control, who are you going to call? Call the bug man, 923-BUGS. For total pest control for your home or business, call the original cell vet. Call the bug man today, 923-BUGS. They said I could find you here. Why are you fishing? Our company's got to ship out two full color brochures and 20 color copies. You're killing me! It's done. Designed, printed, packaged, and shipped. How? You just gotta know the right people. Baker Printing, the printing people. How come you get to fish in this private lake? Like I said, you just gotta know the right people. You can know the right people too. Welcome back for segment three of our one of today's edition of the Clarence Bug Show. We have been talking education uh, in the first hour, spending time with Dr. Suwan Butte, Executive Director of the Louisiana Office of Student Financial Aid. Also, in the last segment, speaking with Southern University's Edward Willis, the Vice Chancellor of Student Affairs and Enrollment Management. For this segment, we speak with a friend to all of public education, all of Louisiana, and I'm so proud to say a personal friend of mine as well. He is the superintendent of the award-winning West Feliciana Parish School System and is also a COVID-19 survivor, speaking of none other than Superintendent Hollis Milton. Super, good morning, my friend, and how are you today? Good morning, sir. Doing well. Thank you for asking. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of the show, uh, making improvements every day from the virus. So has your experience with COVID-19 borne out to be what we've heard from so many people? Yes, sir. And, and you know, it impacts uh, everyone differently, mm -hmm. but uh, it really hit me very hard. Uh, as I've described to people, it's about like getting in the ring with Mike Tyson. Mm -hmm. uh, it will beat you down. Um, I, had, I had high fevers for seven days before wow. entering the hospital. Uh, eventually, I, I developed pneumonia in my lungs. I was extremely close uh, to, be, to going on a ventilator. Uh, at one point in the hospital, they had me on the highest level of oxygen they could provide, and I still could not uh, produce the oxygen levels that my body needed. So it is a very, very challenging and scary virus, and um, I, just, I just ask people uh, to be safe, be very responsible at this time. I know that we all have stresses uh, for work and for so many other situations, but safety is the highest priority. And so uh, as much as folks can do that, uh, stay at home, uh, you know, go for necessities only, wash your hands, do all the things that the doctors are asking and the medical community is asking us to do, not only to protect yourself, but to protect others, and especially those others that may have other conditions that can make this virus so much worse. Knowing how tight-knit uh, the, the community of West Feliciana is, you had to have a whole lot of people praying and pulling for you in that regard. Can you say enough about the support from your community? And look, that, that's the strength of our community. Uh, we are tight-knit. We are such a caring community. Look, I have not missed a meal every day. <laughs> There's a meal dropped off at my doorstep, a card of encouragement. When I was in the hospital, I was able to have my phone on me and the text messages, the amount of prayer that was going on for me and still continues to go on, uh, it's just overwhelming. And it reminds me of how blessed I am to be a part of the West Louisiana Parish and, and the community of West Louisiana Parish. So let's talk a little bit. Bessie now uh, has awarded uh, guidelines for course credit 
and how to determine grade level promotion for students K through 11. Exactly how is that going to work, Superintendent? Yes, sir. So basically what we're doing right now, we're st still providing continuous learning and we'll continue to do so not only through the end of May when school traditionally closes, but also during summer school uh, as we'll offer our robust summer school program for our students. But just to say it in general, a majority of students, if they were just not in um, a situation where they were just so far behind before school ended, a majority of those students will pass and move on to the following grade. Every district has a pupil progression plan but I also know that with lots of empathy and understanding that there wasn't a last nine weeks, uh, that most school systems will make the choice of, of, of moving students on as long as they had done a majority of the work. And by the way, what we did immediately, once we recognized we were going to be out, we had our teachers reach out to our students who were in jeopardy of failing and offered them additional opportunities to learn, grow, and catch up. And I can tell you, we've been very fortunate. Uh, our students took advantage of that and have moved themselves in a good situation. So I do believe a majority of students will move up. That also comes with the idea that we lost some learning time uh, for our students. So every district, including ours, is working very hard on robust plans that uh, through distance learning, through traditional paper pencil resources, uh, if, if students don't have the opportunity because of where they live with internet or financial constraints to make sure that students are staying sharp and still learning. Again, we'll have a summer school uh, program that will be offered to, to many of our students. And next year when we come back, we know that as good as our plans have been in the past for remediation, we're going to have to do a better job there. We're going to have to offer extended opportunities for after school tutoring programs, remediation programs, and we're even looking at a Saturday school plan uh, to put together. So uh, we've got a lot of work to do to make sure that uh, we make up for this lost learning time. As best you can tell, Superintendent Milton, uh, are any accommodations in the works for low income families to ensure that they have internet access to be able to? keep the learning process in motion? Yes, sir, and I cannot speak for, for every district. Uh, one of the things that we did as soon as we, uh, as soon as the first closing occurred uh, from the governor a few weeks ago, uh, we started providing uh, computers to some of our students. Uh, and also we, we had a limited number, but we also had some Wi-Fi hotspots. Mm -hmm. What we're doing right now is we just finished a, a widespread survey that dived deep to try to figure out specifically what parents would need. And in part, the reason I say that is when we look at internet access, especially in rural communities, right. sometimes it's not about the finances, it's just about where you live. Right. And so it may not do us justice to provide a Wi-Fi hotspot to a place that can't get to a cellular tower. And so we're trying to look at it in triage in every aspect to say, do you have the ability that where you live, can you access a tower? And then that would ask of us to look at our resources to provide a Wi-Fi hotspot. Uh, if you have internet, but you don't have a computer, uh, then we're looking at providing those resources to our kids. And then in some areas, quite honestly, the concession is, is that we either put hot spots in places where families can travel to get to that access right or b continue to provide paper pencil resources with a teacher calling and walking through walking students through it because some places in our parish it is uh, a hot spot does no good just because the infrastructure is not there mm -hmm. so we're trying to personalize that customize that to make sure that we keep all of our kids where they need to be whether it be uh, finances that are holding them back or whether it's just the infrastructure, but trying to figure out what that is and then, uh, and, then, and then give a customized solution. How important, Superintendent Milton, has the parental role in the education equation become in the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic? Um, it's absolutely uh, important that a parent, a guardian, or someone in that family can provide the guidance and also figure out the technical aspects. For example, uh, and we really have worked hard on this, 
some, about 25% of our families have high-speed, reliable internet in our parish. Right. And about 40% have probably what we call a medium speed mm-hmm. and not the reliability. So we really even depend on our parents. Tell us technically what is that issue. Mm-hmm. Because that issue drives a lot, meaning you, you, you could provide a, a computer to a student, but if they keep having to refresh or lose data, that's going to be frustrating for a kid. So the parental aspect from a, from, a, from a structure about putting a schedule together to make sure that the students are taking advantage of those um, online conferences with teachers, as far as following up with, this, with the school system and surveys, and as far as having some technical um, wherewithal or getting to somebody with some technical wherewithal to give us the knowledge we need to best serve them. So it is extremely important, uh, but we're also just, we know also, um, as you know, so many families are in so many challenging situations right now. And so it's imperative on our end that we try to find the customized solution that works with every single family. As we have continued in the state of Louisiana uh, to try and elevate test scores and the level of education, in recent memory, uh, teachers have had more and more and more obligations and responsibilities put on their plates. Now that all of these students are at home with their parents and parents having to take a much more active role in their child's education, how hopeful are you that now maybe the general public will get a renewed appreciation for the jobs that teachers and administrators do in educating our children? Um, we hear it every day. Our parents have, have such a, a much greater awareness, and with awareness becomes appreciation of how much work our teachers and administrators do for our kids every day. From, from, and look, from A to, to Z, I'm talking from feeding programs to just the, the, the educational aspect, the counseling aspect, the motivational aspect. Uh, I think it's a renewed appreciation for educators, and 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 just like you, I'm hoping that we learn a lot from this awful pandemic that we're facing. I want to pray for those that have that have lost loved ones, pray for the sick, Amen. and I also pray for us as a community, as a state, as a nation, that we also have some other lessons learned. And part of that is the appreciation for essential workers. Mm-hmm. Uh, the appreciation for healthcare workers, and also the appreciation for educators, uh, and what the what the enormous challenges that they face every day, and the heroic work that they do, and I, I'm hoping that that is long term embedded in in our mindset, so that we can be a, a better community, a better state, a better nation moving forward. Finally, Superintendent, as best you can tell. How is teacher morale in your award-winning school district holding up through all of this? Um, so far, I would say really good in the sense that they, they know they're appreciated, they know they're supported. I think the biggest challenge for teachers is, is that they can't be with their students right now. And I think there's, that's a, a sad reality um, that's playing out for all of us, that we cannot be together right now. Uh, but I do think they're working, and I think they're seeing um, the light bulbs come on with their students as they're working through that, and I think that'll keep them going, uh, and, and, and I know that they're doing a great job, and uh, we're going to constantly support them and remind them of that to keep their morale high. He is a former superintendent of the year and the current superintendent of the award-winning West Feliciana Parish School System. Superintendent Hollis Milton, thank you so much for the time and uh, God bless you and yours, my friend, and we are hoping for a speedy and complete recovery. Thank you kindly, my friend. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right, let's uh, get our final break of our one out of the way. We'll do that and we'll come back and put a big old bow on our one and wrap up this Monday, our one edition of the Clarence Bug Show, right where you've got it here on the Pelican. Stay close.
Hi, I'm Bobby Yarbrough with Manda Fine Meats. Here at Manda, we know what the folks of South Louisiana love. They love great flavored smoked sausage, delicious deli meats, and specialty items like boudin and andouille sausage. Manda Fine Meats has been providing these products since 1947. We produce them right here in Baton Rouge, so you know you're always getting the freshest product at your local grocery store. Manda Fine Meats. Taste the fresh local flavor in everything we make. Make it Manda every time. No one can stop me when I taste the feeling Nothing could ever bring me down Nothing could ever bring me down Taste the feeling Exiles from what you ask? Exiled from the radio. But now, we're on your television. I'm Bill Perfita. He's Kevin Gallagher. And they kicked us to the curb. But we're back. We are back with Exiles Television on the Pelican Broadcasting Network. We're going to bring you the newsmakers. We're also going to take your calls and give you great information. It's going to be the best damn radio show on television. Look for it on your cable system or download the app, pelicansportstv.com. From appetizers, pasta dishes, and entrees, La Contea takes pride in preparing all the Italian cuisine we know you love. Enjoy live music every Thursday through Saturday from 6 to 9, happy hour weekdays from 3 to 6, and brunch on Sundays from 11 to 2, as well as dinner portion-sized lunch specials for under $10. Visit our website to view our menu and book a party or meeting in our large banquet room. Once you try La Contea, your Italian dining will change forever. Live and play on the fairway at Greystone Golf and Country Club, a serene, challenging golf destination located in Denham Springs. For tee times and membership opportunities, go to greystonecountryclub.com. Welcome back as we work our way through the final segment of hour one of the Monday edition of the Clarence Bug Show. Very special thank you, by the way, to uh, Edward Willis, the Vice Chancellor of Student Affairs and Enrollment Management at Southern University, Dr. Suwan Butte, Executive Director of the Louisiana Office of Student Financial Aid, and of course, Superintendent Hollis Milton of the West Feliciana Parish School System. As we all know, uh, these individuals are integrally involved along with their staffs and administrations on educating our kids and quite frankly it's our future that's in their hands and they certainly deserve all the support that we can give them in every regard and a very special thank you again to them for taking time out of what are some crazy unusual schedules right now to be sure that the learning process continues you know it's, it's no big secret that here in Louisiana, for quite some time now, we faced more than our fair share of challenges as far as education is concerned. It is my sincere hope that throughout all of this, we will see some new avenues to be able to elevate ourselves as far as education is concerned. We excel in a lot of other areas. Education, unfortunately, has had to play catch up in many regards, but hopefully, this pandemic will have a silver lining in that more parents now will become more integrally involved with their child's education and maybe even just as important, be more ardent supporters of education here in the state of Louisiana. A uh, couple of observations as we work our way up to the top of the hour break. A new report out shows that deadly crashes so far during this stay home order are right on par rivaling that with the same time frame from 2019. It is one of the things that just makes you scratch your head. You're probably saying, well, Clarence, wait a minute. Far fewer cars are on the road. Far fewer people are commuting. Far fewer people are driving these days. How is it that our numbers rival the pre-stay-at-home orders. Well, 
I guess I've got two, new, two words for you, Louisiana drivers. Speeding, no seat belts, distracted driving, all continuing to plague our great state. One of the things that I was hoping for, well, two things in particular in the wake of this pandemic, is that one, crime would go down, two, that we would reduce the carnage on our highways. Unfortunately, that has not happened. That is a serious wake-up call for all of us who drive in the state of Louisiana. It's almost inconceivable that our fatality rate is the same as it was before the stay-home order. Speeding, guys, girls, I get it. Driving around in Baton Rouge, particularly in the early morning, late evening hours, it's something new. It's, it's hard to get accustomed to. Where's all the traffic? Where's the 15 miles an hour all the way home on the interstate? It's a new day. But if you don't exercise some discipline and govern yourself accordingly, we end up where we find ourselves with the exact same number of fatalities that we had before all of the cars were taken off the roadway. I don't know what it's going to take for us to finally wake up and realize that seat belts save lives. If you've ever been in a serious accident, one that had potentially some fatal ramifications, you know just how important seat belts are. Of course now, sadly, for many people that have yet to learn that lesson, and there are far too many of us as Louisianians that have yet to learn the lesson, when it happens, it's too late to learn the lesson. And finally, distracted driving. With all the public service campaigns, with all the announcements asking us to put down the phone, pay attention when behind the wheel, we still suffer from people driving distracted. I know it's a temptation. You're on the highway, there are far fewer cars out there. You might think, erroneously, that it's safe for me to answer that text, for me to send that text, for me to check whatever on the mobile device. But the numbers are what the numbers are. All you have to do is realize something is seriously wrong when we remove all of these cars from the roadway and yet our fatal numbers still rival when we had all the cars on the road. Guys, girls, we're supposed to be better than this. A lot of things in life, COVID-19, so on and so forth, are beyond our control. This is one of the things that is firmly within our hands. We control our own destiny in that regard. So please, I implore you, do what needs to be done. Exercise some discretion and some discipline behind the wheel. And it's not too late. We can still put a dip in those numbers. Also, doctors are warning now that with the quarantine, the stay at home orders, lots more people now are eating a lot more than they have prior to the start of this pandemic. I mean, quite frankly, if you consume all the negative news out there, a lot of people need some sort of comfort. And some of us find that in food, in eating. Louisiana, we are notorious for our comfort food. But doctors are warning now that the quarantine weight gain could well have some lasting impacts here in Louisiana. We've already seen that Louisiana adversely affected because we have so many people that fall into the unhealthy categories. Obesity, diabetes, heart disease, things of that nature. All of them are exacerbated by being overweight. And of course, with all this time that so many people have at home now, and many of them resorting to comfort foods, we run the risk of exacerbating what is already a monumental problem. Listen, I'm not trying to tell you don't eat your crawfish. God knows I love pinching tails and sucking heads just as much as the rest, as, as the rest of us. I know that a good etouffee is hard to push back from the table. I understand, it's Monday, red beans and rice, smoked sausage, gotta have it, I get all that. 
not trying to tell you not to enjoy all of the delicacies and the rich Louisiana food that we grew up on, that we rely on for comfort. But after that meal, after it's settled, you got to get out and walk it off. You got to get out and exercise. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had Rudy Macklin on, head of the governor's office on uh, Council on Physical Fitness and Sports. And he bemoaned the fact that we eat what we eat, but we don't exercise. This is a great opportunity for us as Louisianians to solve one problem as we work our way through another problem. And quite frankly, I understand with the hectic pace of life, pursuing your version of the American dream, a lot of us now are taking this downtime and we're doing things that aren't all that responsible. Alcohol use has gone up. A lot more eating done at home. But if you start now, the old adage, the journey of a thousand miles begins with the single step, you'd be surprised how quickly you find yourself feeling better and wanting to remain in that vein. Additionally, if you've never before taken an interest in your child's health. This is a great opportunity to start them exercising as well. You know, I'm a boomer. I'm, I'm getting on up there in age now, but when we grew up, we didn't have the problem of obesity and overweight just running rampant through society. Primarily because we had PE every day in school. We had things like ROTC where we could burn off those calories. And of course, there was no social media, there was no digital age, there were no video games, well, except for the arcade back then. So when we finished homework after getting home from school, first thing we did was head out the door, jump on that bicycle, and pedal our way to wherever we were going. Pick up game, Breck League, what have you. Those days are gone. But the need for physical fitness still remains. Make fun of it. It's uh, not making fun of it, but make it a fun activity. Find out what your kids are interested in. Find out things that you're interested in and share them with your kids. If there's any silver lining that we should be able to take away from this COVID-19 pandemic is that when all is said and done, Louisiana, has started a concerted campaign to be a healthier Louisiana. Listen, I understand Mardi Gras, influx of people from all over the planet, God knows where, don't know how many cases were brought into Louisiana by people simply coming, hoping to, quote, pass a good time. But the fact of the matter is, our health prior to those individuals coming here and bringing the coronavirus with them was nowhere near optimal. I understand we eat what we eat. I understand we've got a fair and a festival for just about every week of the year. I get that. I'm a Louisianian. I can relate. But at the end of the day, when something like this comes along, the last thing we want is to be adversely impacted because we haven't done prior to this health-wise, what we should do. We're blessed, particularly here in East Baton Rouge, with the nationally recognized Parks and Recreation Service. There are all sorts of ways for you to get out and shed some pounds. And quite frankly, we all need a release after being cooped up in the house all this time. The kids need a release. And there's nothing better for the human body nor for the human spirit than for you to get out there and sweat a little bit, exercise with your spouse, with your kids and your friends. It's something that I am hoping we will take seriously and head off the next time something comes our way because we've made it a concerted effort to become a healthier Louisiana. After the top of the hour break, We'll come back and spend some time with the chief of the Baton Rouge Police Department, Chief Murphy Paul, talking about crime and the COVID pandemic. Also, the 3 o'clock project, Feeding Our Kids. And again, watch out for those biting gnats and stinging flies. They're making a huge comeback. We'll talk about that and more after the top of the hour break on Hour 2 of the Clarence Bug Show right here on the Pelican. Stay close. Hello guys, 
it's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. No one can stop me when I taste the feeling. Nothing could ever bring me down. Nothing, nothing could ever bring me down. Taste the feeling. For total home pest control, who are you going to call? Call the bug man, 923-BUGS. For total pest control for your home or business, call the original Salvant. Call the bug man today, 923-BUGS. Welcome back as we start Hour 2 of the Monday edition of the Clarence Bug Show. Here's hoping that your weekend was an absolutely fabulous one. As we like to say each and every weekend, good Lord willing, if you didn't, you'll still be here when the next one rolls our way and you will have the opportunity to try it all over again. If you were with us at the end of the last hour, uh, you heard me mention one of the things, two things in particular, that I was really hoping would come out of this COVID-19 pandemic is that one, we would become a healthier Louisiana. Two, I was hoping that we would see a significant drop in crime. Initially, with the stay home order, it seems as though that second wish of mine was starting to come true. But in recent memory, I've noticed a troubling trend. Um, I guess maybe you could attribute it to people with cabin fever going stir crazy. Uh, you could maybe also attribute that to uh, the number of unsupervised kids that may be in our communities now uh, because of school being uh, strictly aligned to an online environment. So to start our two, I thought we'd reach out to a dear friend of the show and a friend to law enforcement and all of South Louisiana, the chief of the Baton Rouge Police Department, Chief Murphy Paul. Chief, how are you today, my friend? I'm, I'm doing fine, sir. How are you? Long time no talk. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. It has yes, been sir. that. Great to hear your voice again. So let's start with how the public can assist law enforcement in solving and something that you're real big on, preventing crime. You know, when it comes to crime, it's, it's just, uh, you know, cooperation. You know, when you hear something, say something. Uh, when you learn something, pick up the phone, uh, call Crime Stoppers. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we've been seeing so many success stories when it comes to our partnership with Crime Stoppers, uh, breaking down those barriers in, in the community police relations where people are, are not afraid to pick up the phone and cooperate with our detectives. Uh, and help put, a, put those bad actors away. So that's what we're saying. You know, you do your part as being responsible uh, business persons, uh, responsible residents, and responsible family members. Because what we learned in many of these cases is that before a person commits that act, 
bank. They've communicated that prior to following a criminal activity. And, and, they, and they communicate that to loved ones, to friends, to persons in their inner circle. So what we say is those individuals who are around that person can make a difference. And we're getting phone calls from uh, loved ones, family members, friends who have helped us put some of these bad actors away over the past two years. Now, let's, let's put uh, what may be, Chief Paul, a misconception to bed. Just because we are in the midst of this pandemic and the stay-at-home orders, law enforcement has not relaxed their duties to keeping us safe, correct? No, you know, absolutely. You know, we have to be a little creative. Unfortunately, uh, the stay-at-home order, you know, we talk about that 6% of the population uh, less than 6% that's responsible for the majority of the crime. Unfortunately, they don't listen, right? So we still have shootings. Uh, we still have crime. Now, overall, uh, our crime is down, but we do see some pockets uh, in some areas uh, that we have to focus on. You know, when it comes to domestic violence, uh, we saw some increases in domestic violence, unfortunately. Right. Uh, we've seen a few increases uh, in the rest uh, for juveniles. Uh, so those are some areas, uh, very small numbers, but they're things that we have to pay attention to. And we have been using the data by repurposing some of our assets. The challenge is how do we address these crime issues, uh, which, like I say, crime is down overall in both categories. Calls for services are down about 100 calls per day. Actually, we've been averaging 100. When I looked at the data yesterday, uh, it's even less than that. So we're probably about 120 calls down per day uh, 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 for calls for service. But what we have to do is how can we provide service to the public while making sure we're keeping our offices safe, okay? Uh, so we've done so many things. We've changed our operations. You know, we no longer arrest people for misdemeanor offenses or, or what we call uh, uh, felonies that, uh, that, that, that doesn't involve an intimate risk of violence. Uh, for example, personal drug use, those type of things. Uh, uh, we issue summons now, and then we'll address it later once this threat is over. Uh, we're not arresting for minor traffic violations or misdemeanors because we believe creating those uh, that interaction between our officers and the public doesn't serve the purpose of our mission to uh, uh, to social distance. So nonviolent offenses, uh, we, 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 we're looking at some of this right now. We have directed patrols at supermarkets, convenience stores, gas stations, uh, parking lots of, uh, of uh, large complexes, uh, pharmacies, and other areas of concern. Uh, we do roll call meetings uh, via video conference and, uh, and uh, conference calls. Uh, so those are things. We suspended grant programs that, by its definition, create interaction with the public to seek out speedy DWI enforcement. We've uh, temporarily postponed those. And then we created a task force with us, uh, ABC, the fire department, where uh, we're making sure that there's compliance with our stay at home order. I noticed that uh, we had a case uh, roughly a week and change ago where there was a juvenile uh, involved in an attempted burglary and ended up leading law enforcement on a multi-parish chase. For the record, interagency and inter-parish law enforcement cooperation has not changed at all, correct? No, absolutely not. In fact, uh, right before I got on a call with you, I was on a phone call with our uh, police department, the EBR. Uh, we have our daily conference calls with our police officers. We invited them in uh, to make sure we are all on the same page uh, when it comes to how we enforce. You know, we don't want to send a, the wrong message uh, to the community uh, during this time of crisis. So we're working in partnership with LSU, Southern uh, Baton Rouge Community College, all the sheriff's office, all our other uh, first responders. Uh, in, in the East Baton Rouge Parish. So you know, we are all on one accord when it comes to that. In fact, when we made some of the changes, we made sure that I uh, called the meeting uh, to make sure that all first responders, particularly uh, in EBR, uh, were aware of what we were doing so that they can uh, take some of the same procedures uh, in place as well. Right now, Chief, uh, with all of the kids being at home, uh, in many instances, they are spending time with friends in the neighborhood, uh, friends uh, from school, things of that nature. How important is it that parents 
take seriously the role of parenting and supervise their kids and maybe more important, know what their kids are bringing into their homes? Well, yeah, you know, uh, we talked about this before, you know, this epidemic, uh, uh, this crisis that we're going through, and we say know what your kids are doing. You know, right now, uh, we know kids are spending more time at home. You've probably seen us last week. Uh, our public information officers have been pushing the importance of gun safety, mm -hmm. uh, educating the public, especially now because we're spending more time at home, right. to buy gun locks, to secure your weapons, and, you know, have conversation with your kids about uh, 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 about weapons and making sure that you're securing them. Uh, it's so important right now. We're starting to see, uh, especially with the domestic violence, and uh, some of the kids are starting to come out more. Uh, I talked about those arrests. So, you know, it's important for us to educate, but I think it's important for us to let uh, the community know that what they're experiencing is normal, right? The anxiety and stress that's going on uh, that you're experiencing in these unprecedented times is normal. We all experience this. Look, our police officers are experiencing it uh, when, when, when they go home. Uh, could you imagine a fear that a family member has thinking that a police officer was exposed and brought that home? Uh, so, so we're dealing with those same issues uh, when it comes to making sure that our wellness program is pushing out information that our police officers and their family are getting credible factual information and not being led by some of the misinformation uh, on social media. So what we're telling family members is, look, keep calm during these COVID times. Uh, we understand that what you're going through is normal. We all have that fear and anxiety and stress, but get help. You know, uh, the department, uh, what is it, DHH, I believe, uh, they, they, they have a 1-800 hotline 24-7 to help you cope with it. It's 1-866-310-7977. That's 1-866-310-7977. But they're trained counselors that can help you manage that stress that you're dealing with. Finally, Chief, uh, how are the, the rank and file, the men and women, the boots on the ground holding up throughout this pandemic with the BRPD? You know, right now uh, we have our daily conference calls, and, and I try to get a pulse on it. So right now uh, we are. I think there's more of a concern uh, with family members and, you know, family uh, are being worried. That's why it was important for us to push our wellness program out. But, look, our men and women always step up to the plate. You know, uh, it's been times like these where, you know, why we are public servants and why God has a special place in heaven for first responders. Amen. Uh, and they're stepping up to the plate. They're doing it. You know, uh, there, there's some financial losses as, as well uh, that our officers are not able to, you know, get the, the normal income. But, you know, they understand that we are still blessed because we still get a paycheck. That's right. That's you know, right. When you, when you talk about the millions of people, 20-something uh, million, I believe, on the unemployment line, and when you talk about those in our community who don't know where their next paycheck is going to come from, or the businesses that can no longer pay their employees, look, we understand that, and we're working with the community during these unprecedented times. We understand uh, the stress. Uh, our police officers are demonstrating um, um, uh, good composure. Uh, when we talk about these compliance checks, Right. And I listen to the stories from that team, how we're working with those individuals to get in compliance. Mm -hmm. And look, our community has stepped up. We haven't had an incident where people haven't listened, thank God. Well, Chief, it is great to hear your voice again, my friend. Mm -hmm. And uh, now that we are back up in a new and expanded format, don't be a stranger. Any information that you need disseminated, you have my number. Feel free to give us a call and allow us the privilege of helping. Absolutely. God bless you. And, uh, and we do have PPE we've given out to all of our, our folks. Uh, but one thing, I, 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 if you can talk a little about, is uh, overdoses and uh, 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 that addiction, that, that monster called addiction. We are seeing some increases in uh, overdose calls for services, which I believe that means people are not managing their stress properly and they right. need to get the help. So please push out uh, any information you have as it relates to those who are suffering from that monster called addiction, that will help as well. God bless. God bless, my friend. Thank you, Chief. Chief Murphy Paul, head of the BRPD. All right, we'll get our ones, our twos, 
first break out of the way, and we'll talk more right where you've got it on the Clarence Bug Show, the Monday edition, right here on the Pelican. Stay close. Hi, I am Dr. Farrell Frugier, Jr., and I am a general dentist at Frugier Family Dentistry. I was born and raised in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I went to Catholic High School, LSU, and LSU School of Dentistry in New Orleans, where I received my DDS degree in 1986. I always have and will continue to be committed to continuing my education, to invest in technology, which makes the diagnosis and delivery of dentistry more thorough, more comfortable, and more aesthetically pleasing. In our practice, we are here to serve the patients. We want to improve their quality of life and to develop relationships with our patients. In dentistry, we have a chance to impact lives on a daily basis, not just by doing dentistry, but by getting to know them and being a part of their life. We also believe in giving back to our community. So every year, we give back to the Greater Baton Rouge Food Bank, Toys for Tots, and Mary Bird Perkins Cancer Center. Please stop by and visit our office. We would love to take care of you and your family. Hi, I'm Bobby Yarborough with Manda Fine Meats. Here at Manda, we know what the folks of South Louisiana love. They love great flavored smoked sausage, delicious deli meats, and specialty items like boudin and andouille sausage. Manda Fine Meats has been providing these products since 1947. We produce them right here in Baton Rouge, so you know you're always getting the freshest product at your local grocery store. Manda Fine Meats, taste the fresh local flavor in everything we make. Make it Manda every time. That's right, the Clarence Bug Show is back, along with the exiles, Bill Profita and Kevin Gallagher. We've put the band back together, South Louisiana's talk team, and it's only on the Pelican. 10 a.m. till 12 noon, right here on the Pelican. From appetizers, pasta dishes, and entrees, La Cantea takes pride in preparing all the Italian cuisine we know you love. Enjoy live music every Thursday through Saturday from 6 to 9, happy hour weekdays from 3 to 6, and brunch on Sundays from 11 to 2, as well as dinner portion-sized lunch specials for under $10. Visit our website to view our menu and book a party or meeting in our large banquet room. Once you try La Cantea, your Italian dining will change forever. Welcome back for segment, what is this, Marty? Segment two of our two of today's Monday edition of the Clarence Bug Show. We um, all are trying to get accustomed to this new reality of COVID-19. And of course, one of the things that has really, really been a challenge is feeding our kids as school has now transposed into an online environment. Uh, ran across a group that is doing some absolutely amazing work in filling this void for individuals affected by COVID-19. It is a group that uh, I will be the first to admit, prior to COVID-19, I had not known a whole lot about the three o'clock project. But boy, they have kicked their mission into high gear. And, and when I say high gear, I may have just qualified for the understatement of the year award. The program manager at the three o'clock project, Shea Smith, joins us to talk more about this monumental mission and the amazing job that they are doing. Shea, good morning and how are you today? Good morning, I'm doing well, how are you? I am well, Shea, thank you for asking. So. For folks that aren't aware of the Three O'Clock Project, exactly what is it? So the Three O'Clock Project is a nonprofit organization uh, currently based in Louisiana, mm -hmm. and our mission is simply to provide healthy meals for kids in need. So was this program in place prior to the COVID-19 pandemic? And if it was, what kind of disparity are you seeing now between what you were serving then and what you're serving now? Yeah, so we've been around for about three years uh, mm -hmm. serving meals to kids in Louisiana. But, you know, before the COVID-19 pandemic, we were serving meals to kids after school who might not have supper when they get home mm -hmm. and in summer months when they lose access to their school meals. Now, we were serving about 300,000 meals a year. Mm -hmm. Um, but now with the COVID-19 pandemic, we really kind of 
been called to action and kicked into high gear. And just last week, we served about 178,000 meals in just seven days. Wow. Did you say 178,000 just last week? Just last week. That's right. Wow. So how are you funded? And, and is there anything the public can do to make sure the 3 o'clock project has adequate funding? Yeah, so we're funded through a federal feeding program through the USDA, so we're, we're very thankful for that. Um, mm -hmm. We're reimbursed for all of the meals that are compliant with their standards and that are served to kids. Um, and we also received, actually we were the first grant recipient from Governor John Bell Edwards' COVID-19 response plan, so wow. that's also really exciting. Um, but we are always accepting donations from our community. You know, it really takes a village to run a mobile meals operation, you know, at the scale that we are. So right. if folks want to support us, they can go to our website at 3 o'clockproject.org and donate there. And we would be, you know, super grateful. Because those donations are going to go directly toward putting meals in front of kids who really need them right now. So is that 3 o'clock the number 3 o'clock or do we spell out 3 o'clock? It's all spelled out. Okay. So what areas do you service and how do you determine where the program will service individuals? Yeah, so right now we're in about 10 parishes, um, East Baton Rouge Parish and surrounding areas, uh, the New Orleans area, uh, Lafayette and Acadiana. Um, we just got another site in St. Tammany. So we're kind of all over southern Louisiana right now. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> the way we determine where we're going to go is we get contacted by a school district who says we really need help or we talk to community members who say can you come to us i mean we will literally go anywhere in louisiana where folks need us um, we're willing to grow as as much as we need to in order to, to meet the needs of our communities so have you seen a trend developing yet as far as the number of, of students that you were serving, uh, and obviously the longer this goes on, seems like the higher that number is. Has it stabilized any? You know, we're honestly seeing a lot of growth. I think as, as more parents and children find out that we're out there, mm -hmm. um, and, and more school districts find out about us, and we can you know, continue to, to grow into more areas, right. I, you know, I think we're only gonna continue to see growth. You know, because we don't know how long this this, you know, stay at home order is going to last. We don't know how long the schools are going to be closed. So I think, um, I think that will continue to grow. So how are you staffed? Is it uh, volunteers? Is it uh, regular individuals on staff? Can you use additional individuals to help in your mission? Yeah, so actually, um, we have employed over 350 service industry workers who wow. were out of work during uh -huh. the COVID-19 pandemic. Mm -hmm. So we you know, we have hired employees, but we also have volunteers who are showing up at some of our mobile routes and just helping to hand out meals and have a smile on their face and, you know, help us with paperwork and things like that. So um, we're always hiring. You can go to our website again and just choose an email if you would like to volunteer or if you are looking for, you know, employment. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, we can always use help as we continue to grow. How grateful are those food service individuals to be able to pick up a check at a time where there's so much uncertainty going on, Shay? Well, I mean, I'm sure it's, it's pretty comforting to, to have a paycheck right now. I mean, I know a lot of folks have lost their jobs, so, you know, and that was one of the things that we wanted to do when we started this was to make this a win-win, you know, for as many people as we can. So. Mm -hmm. So we're really proud to employ those service industry, industry folks. You talk about uh, just in the last week servicing over 175,000 individuals. What's the reception been like from parents and students that have been the beneficiaries of this amazing program? I think overall folks are just really grateful. I mean, it's like you mentioned, this is a time of a lot of uncertainty. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of parents I'm sure have lost their jobs. You know, school children don't have access to their school meals. So I think that just, you know, making sure that kids have two healthy, balanced meals seven days a week mm -hmm. is a really great thing. And so I think folks overall are really grateful. So again, if you would, how can we find out more about the three o'clock project if it's parents or, or students needing uh, that nutritious meal, or if it's a school system that would like to partner with you in feeding the kids during these uncertain times? 
Yeah, so the best way to find out more is going to be to go to our website, 3 o'clockproject.org, and again, that's all spelled out. Um, and we have an entire page on our website donate, or, um, dedicated to our COVID-19 response, so you can find out all of our routes, uh, what days they'll be there, what time. You can look at our menus every week. Um, and then, you know, for, for school districts or for parents, if they want to request more information, you know, you can email us through our website. So I think our website is going to be the best place to go. Fantastic. She is the program manager for the, you might want to change the name to the amazing three o'clock project. <laughs> Shay Smith, thank you so much for the time, for the information, but more important, thanks for this amazing work that you all are doing for children all across South Louisiana. We are immensely grateful. Oh, well, thank you for having me. You're quite welcome. It is uh, an absolutely amazing project. I mean, the numbers, uh, I don't know if you caught that and, and put it all into context. Last year, over the entire year, they fed 300 and some odd thousand meals. In the last week alone, 178,000 meals. It just lets you know what the need is out there. And uh, thank God we've got people like the Three O'Clock Project and the work that they're doing. If you'd like to volunteer, or if you are looking for gainful employment, three o'clock project dot org dot org and spell three T H R double -E, e O'Clock Project dot org. It is an amazing uh, example of what the human spirit is capable of doing and what can be done, even in the darkest and the most uncertain of times, once we all get that common goal in mind and we're all pulling in the same direction. And uh, quite frankly, it is something that ensures the health and the well-being of communities at large because you know here in Louisiana lots of rural communities lots of uh, economically depressed communities and nothing makes it harder to foster a learning environment than a child that's hungry and uh, it has exposed in our community what a lot of us knew all along was just underneath the surface but when this COVID-19 pandemic hit, it really brought a lot of that right up to the surface. And fortunately, we have folks like the Three O'Clock Project that are doing some absolutely amazing work here in the great state of Louisiana. We are coming up on the bottom of the hour and segment three. I, uh, <laughs> I hope you all will not hold this against me. Clarence, you always the purveyor of bad news. You already know we're fighting this COVID-19 pandemic. Oh my God, what you about to tell us about next? Well, it's South Louisiana. And this time of year, the state bird rears its ugly head. No, not the brown pelican, talking about the mosquitoes. And there is a new nuisance out there as well. If you've been outside recently, you may have run into the biting gnats and the stinging flies. These things are absolutely horrible. I'm so glad that I've had, a, uh, I've had the weekend since one of them stung me on this ear. I don't, know, I don't know if you can see it now. It's gone down. But at one point, <laughs> I can't believe I'm telling you all this. At one point, my left ear was nearly twice as large as my right ear. And no, I'm not contagious at least not that I know of. Randy Vaith, the interim director of the East Baton Rouge Mosquito Abatement and Control Program, will join us to tell us how we can stop from getting West Nile from the mosquitoes and hopefully how you won't run into this absolute nuisance. Uh, some people call them buffalo flies, some call them turkey flies. I just call them a darn nuisance. We'll spend some time with Randy Vaith talking about how you can make it through COVID-19 and not contract West Nile. After this bottom of the hour break, we'll talk with Randy and a whole lot more right where you've got it on the Clarence Bug Show here on the Pelican. Stay close. For total home pest control, who are you going to call? 
Call the bug man. 923 bug. For total pest control for your home or business, call the original cell vent. Call the bug man today. 923 bugs. No one can stop me when I taste the feeling. Nothing could ever bring me down. Nothing could ever bring me down. Taste the feeling. Live and play on the fairway at Greystone Golf and Country Club a serene, challenging golf destination located in Denham Springs. For tee times and membership opportunities, go to greystonecountryclub.com. From appetizers, pasta dishes, and entrees, La Cantea takes pride in preparing all the Italian cuisine we know you love. Enjoy live music every Thursday through Saturday from 6 to 9, happy hour weekdays from 3 to 6, and brunch on Sundays from 11 to 2, as well as dinner portion-sized lunch specials for under $10. Visit our website to view our menu and book a party or meeting in our large banquet room. Once you try La Contea, your Italian dining will change forever. Exiles from what you ask? Exiled from the radio. But now, we're on your television. I'm Bill Perfita. He's Kevin Gallagher. And they kicked us to the curb. But we're back. We are back with Exiles Television on the Pelican Broadcasting Network. We're going to bring you the newsmakers. We're also going to take your calls and give you great information. It's going to be the best damn radio show on television. Look for it on your cable system or download the app, pelicansportstv.com. They said I could find you here. Why are you fishing? Our company's got to ship out two full color brochures and 20 color copies. You're killing me. It's done. Designed, printed, packaged, and shipped. How? You just got to know the right people. Baker Printing, the printing people. How come you get to fish in this private lake? Like I said, you just got to know the right people. You can know the right people, too. Welcome back for segment three of hour two, almost forgot where we were, of the Monday edition of the Clarence Bug Show. If, um, if you were with us heading into the last commercial break, you heard me announce that, yeah, once again, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but COVID-19 is not the only thing that we are battling here in South Louisiana. That's the bad news. The good news is it's South Louisiana. And we South Louisiana folks know that this time of year, we start getting ready for that annual visit, almost a perpetual visit from the Louisiana state bird. No, not the brown pelican. It is the mosquito and all the inconveniences that come along with that. Randy Vaith is the interim director of the East Baton Rouge Mosquito Abatement and Rodent Control Program and joins us to start segment three. Good morning, Randy. How are you, my friend? Good morning, Clarence. Well, my hair is getting long and my hands are rough, but other than that, I'm doing pretty well. <laughs> Fantastic. So I think I saw uh, a press release recently where the Mosquito Abatement and Rodent Control Program has had to make some adjustments to residential spraying because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Is that correct? And if so, what adjustments have you had to make? That is correct. We, we've temporarily suspended uh, our residential inspections and treatment. Uh, we kind of have a small staff, a lot of older individuals. We want to <clears throat> really reduce our opportunities for contracting it. And uh, we have, we're still continuing surveillance. We're running traps. Uh, we're doing larva siding of all the septic affluent roadside ditches. <clears throat> and we're still operating the night spray trucks five nights a week. And we're getting ready as soon as we can get some more uh, PPE, personal protective equipment. Mm -hmm. We're going to start distributing uh, the rodent bait, the poison that we give out for people to help control rats and mice. 
we're going to actually have a drive through here at our department once we get everything in place and that that should be taking place pretty quick but that we're not spraying uh, residences right now for daytime mosquitoes so if an individual happens to be outside at night uh, walk in the neighborhood d doing whatever and the trucks are out spraying what is the best course of action for those individuals randy and, and that's a great question because we've been experiencing that recently if you see the truck and you'll hear it it's got flashing lights has that high pitched whine right please go inside or at least go in the backyard and wait about 15 minutes after the truck has passed so you don't have any uh, exposure to those small droplets of pesticide. Uh, most people don't have any reaction to it, but there's some people that have allergies, and we don't want to have anyone with an adverse reaction mm -hmm. to that spray. Right. But there are a lot of people now, we see in neighborhoods, people are taking advantage of uh, getting out and walking around. Uh, so we do see... <laughs> people uh, populate in some areas and we can't spray if there's people in the street we turn the sprayer off mm -hmm. so uh, please please help out and, and go inside for a while so with the curtailing of daytime spraying I guess now more than ever it's incumbent upon we individuals to do our part around our homes and the businesses that are still open to try and mitigate uh, the mosquito population. If you would, refresh our memory on the things that we as individuals can do to try and tamp down on the mosquito population. Well, the good thing is we've been kind of in a drought the last few weeks until this weekend. And so there's not a lot of standing water, but if you've got water, you know, in a bird bath or in a wading pool, please empty that out every week and uh, make sure that you wear repellent and protective clothing. Right now, we don't see too many mosquitoes, Clarence, but we're having huge populations of these tiny biting gnats, oh, black yes. flies. Yes. And unfortunately, they're a daytime flyer, very strong flyer. Mm -hmm. uh, they're usually associated with high river levels. Our spray just doesn't work on them. Mm -hmm. And so about the only thing you can do is wear protective clothing. And the repellents that work on mosquitoes like DEET right. don't, don't necessarily work very well, as I've found out. I've got big knots all over the back of my neck. <laughs> right. Uh, we have heard that vanilla extract and oil of lemon eucalyptus mm -hmm. and even Victoria's Secret Amber Romance <laughs> Uh, have been effective in repelling them. Now, right. if you're going to use the amber romance, you might want to tell your wife first. <laughs> you don't want to come home smelling like that. But right. Anyway, uh, I don't know. Those are just anecdotal, but mm. I, uh, some of the people at the golf course and the zoo have, have uh, told us that, yeah, that does help. So do we have any information uh, as far as whether or not they transmit any sort of diseases, uh, the stinging, uh, stinging flies and the biting gnats, as best we can tell? They do not carry any human disease in the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, they have been implicated in carrying some disease of poultry, mm -hmm. but uh, not, not humans. It's just a very annoying bite, mm -hmm. and some people are very sensitive to of the anticoagulant that they inject when they chew on you mm -hmm. and you can get a big lesion that can persist for several days it's very uh, red and, and annoying so it, they are really a problem uh, but they go away when the w river goes down and when the weather uh, gets a little hotter they just disappear I noticed uh, in certain parts of town where there are canals that feed into the Mississippi River, with the river being so high, a lot of these canals now have that backwater that's pretty much just standing water. Uh, does your agency plan any spraying of those canals if the river does not recede fairly quickly? Right. There, surprisingly enough, the canals, the water is moving a little bit. Uh, like Monte Sano Bayou, right over here at 72nd Street. That's, that's the, yeah, treated. that's the one I was referencing, right. yeah. Right, and it, it has been a problem in the past with some Anopheles mosquito. That's a mosquito that, common name is the malaria mosquito. Mm -hmm. uh, it has been a problem. We've, we just checked it out last Thursday. Uh, we haven't seen any problems yet, but the problem is when the water level goes down, 
and you just have isolated pools that don't have little minnows in it. Mm -hmm. Right now there's fish in there, right. and the fish can help control that mosquito. But when that water level goes down and you just have these pools, that's when the problem exists, and that's when we have to get out there and, and do some treatment. I don't know if this question uh, is above your pay grade or not, but I'll pose it anyway, Randy. Um, I got stung by one of those stinging flies last week, and it was accompanied, uh, aside from the, the swelling, the puffiness around the bite site, by the most ungodly itching you can imagine. Uh, if someone is in fact stung or bitten uh, and they get that itching, will a standard uh, anti-itch cream or, or something with, uh, I think, um, uh, oh man, I'm, I'm drawing a blank right now, the anti-itch active yeah. ingredient, will, will that help in that regard? It, it, it will. I've, I've used the calamine lotion calamine, and cortisone. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I've used those hydrocortisone creams. The important thing is you don't want to scratch those lesions because then you can get a secondary bacterial infection. So oh. I know it's, it, it's, it's hard to not scratch them because they are very, very itchy. But, uh, yeah, hydrocortisone cream and, and calamine lotion help. What about our pets? Uh, do we need to be on guard uh, this time of year uh, from these, these, these stinging flies and biting gnats and for mosquitoes for our pets, Randy? Well, certainly mosquitoes, the house mosquito is always uh, a problem with pets mm -hmm. and, and because it transmits heartworm. Mm -hmm. And uh, we know we need to keep our dogs and our cats uh, provided with the heartworm preventative medication all year long. Right. Uh, yeah, even cats get these heartworms. So that mosquito is always a problem. I don't know if the gnats are a problem on, on dogs and cats. Mm -hmm. They may be because they do feed on any kind of warm-blooded animal. Right. They certainly can be a problem on, on poultry production sites. Mm -hmm. So as best you can tell, and am I reading you correct when I heard you say that stinging, that biting, they are actually feeding and not simply stinging? That's correct, Clarence. That's a female black fly, mm -hmm. and they're not very precise. They just grind away, even though they're tiny. Right. They just grind away through your skin, rupture a blood vessel, and feed on it. And... Uh, yeah, they are taking a blood meal so that they can develop eggs. So uh, that's, and the males are just feeding on nectar. Mm -hmm. It's that little tiny female fly that's causing all the discomfort. Wow. Uh, I would be remiss in my duties, Randy, if I did not inquire as to how the men and women of your agency are holding up throughout this pandemic. So far, thank you for asking. Uh, so far, we're doing pretty well. We have had one of our employees that, uh, was hospitalized with the COVID-19. He has uh, been released and, and is on the recovery. Uh, and, and I think that's probably true in many agencies. Uh, we're trying to our best to, <laughs> to uh, you know, observe all the sanitary practices to reduce that kind of transmission. Mm -hmm. Our people are coming in at different uh, intervals. Uh, we got people working from home. People go directly to their truck. Uh, we're trying everything we can to try to minimize that kind of uh, uh, close proximity to other workers. So how can we find out more about the services offered by the East Baton Rouge Paris Mosquito Abatement and Rodent Control Program, Randy? Well, you can call our number. We still have uh, clerical people that will answer your questions. You can go to our Facebook page. If you go to Facebook and just search for East Baton Rouge Parish Mosquito Abatement, mm -hmm. and you can see where we're spraying. We're posting all the, the maps every week of where we have sprayed, and we're answering questions and providing links to information about the flies, about when we'll get back to working. Uh, that's probably the best source of information right now is, is that social media Facebook page. Randy Vaith, the Interim Director of the EBR Mosquito Abatement and Rodent Control Program. Always great to hear your voice, and always we appreciate the great information to help keep us safe, Randy. Clarence, thank you so much for getting our message out. We really appreciate it. You're quite welcome, my friend. All right, we need to get our final break of today's show out of the way. As Marty would say, we are round and third, and 
heading towards home. Stay with us. We'll come back and wrap it all up right where you've got it on the Monday edition of the Clarence Bug Show here on the Pelican. Stay close. From appetizers, pasta dishes, and entrees, La Contea takes pride in preparing all the Italian cuisine we know you love. Enjoy live music every Thursday through Saturday from 6 to 9, happy hour weekdays from 3 to 6, and brunch on Sundays from 11 to 2, as well as dinner portion-sized lunch specials for under $10. Visit our website to view our menu and book a party or meeting in our large banquet room. Once you try La Contea, your Italian dining will change forever. Live and play on the fairway at Greystone Golf and Country Club, a serene, challenging golf destination located in Denham Springs. For tee times and membership opportunities, go to greystonecountryclub.com. I've seen a lot of things during my life, more bad things than good. I've lived in a lot of places, but never a home. I don't think anybody cares about me anymore. And now I'm tired. Signed, Brian, age 11. Abused and neglected children in East Baton Rouge Parish are in dire need of CASA volunteers. Please call 379-8598 today. Change a life of hurt into a life of hope. Hello, guys. It's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. Hi, I'm Bobby Yarborough with Manda Fine Meats. Here at Manda, we know what the folks of South Louisiana love. They love great flavored smoked sausage, delicious deli meats, and specialty items like boudin and andouille sausage. Manda Fine Meats has been providing these products since 1947. We produce them right here in Baton Rouge, so you know you're always getting the freshest product at your local grocery store. Manda Fine Meats. Taste the fresh local flavor in everything we make. Make it Manda every time. Welcome back for the final segment of the Monday edition of the Clarence Bug Show. Uh, tomorrow being Tuesday, we hope that you will tune in again and check out the Exiles. My main men, Bill Profita and Kevin Gallagher, will be right here, same spot, same time, same channel, disseminating more information. Uh, just another example of Pelican Broadcasting allowing South Louisiana folks to talk with other South Louisiana folks, well actually Louisiana folks in general, talking about things that affect Louisiana folks. And if you've not already done so, today would be a great time for you to do it. Go ahead and download the Pelican Broadcasting app. Put it on your mobile device and that way, no matter where you go, there we will be, as always. And, of course, if the kids have the TV, the big screen, all locked up because they're doing the video game thing, or, better yet, going on with their online learning, download, or better yet, just simply go on your PC to pelicansportstv.com, click on the live stream, and you, of course, can view us there. You may remember last week we spent some time with Carmen Million, uh, president and CEO of the Better Business Bureau for South Central Louisiana. And true to her word, at the end of our conversation, I told Carmen to please keep our information in case there was some more information that would come along that needed disseminating here in the great state of Louisiana. And true to her word, she's done just that. As we all know, circumstances like we are dealing with right now, the stay home order, the pandemic in general, typically do one of one and or both of two things. Bring out the best of humanity, and on the flip side of that coin, bring out the worst of humanity. It, um, for good-hearted, hardworking, decent Louisiana folks, it's hard to wrap our minds around the fact that there are people out there that are spending all of their time 
finding devious ways to separate you from your money. It is a sad commentary on that part of the human spirit, but it is what it is. And we need all the information that we can to protect ourselves. Carmen Million sent me recently, uh, just yesterday, day before, the latest scam alert from the Better Business Bureau of South Central Louisiana. Scammers impersonating friends or family in order to buy gift cards to steal your money. I'll read uh, directly from the press release. Your Better Business Bureau of South Central Louisiana has been contacted by the Central Chamber of Commerce and has also seen posts on Facebook from the Livingston Parish Sheriff's Office about gift card scams. Throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, scammers are looking for ways to, all caps, take your money. Here's how it works. Consumers are contacted either by text or email, and they are asked to purchase a gift card. Scammers often impersonate friends, family members, or employees to carry out this scam to try and fool someone into actually buying the gift card. Once consumers buy the gift card, scammers will ask for the number on the back of the gift card. What people need to understand is once they give those numbers out, the potential scammer will remove all of the funds off that gift card and you, the trusting person that you are, will be left with nothing. So the BBB of South Central Louisiana offers these tips. One, if somebody requests you to purchase a gift card, you need to pick up the phone and call them. Don't just automatically assume that the person you are talking to is in fact the person they claim to be. Secondly, you should never purchase a gift card and then give someone the number off the back of the card. That enables the scammer to suck those funds right from underneath you and that card then is only worth the plastic that it was printed on. And finally, number three, if you give that number to scammers, whatever money you had already put on the card will be gone. Scammers will have the money, you will not, and rest assured, you will never see or hear from them again. Now, please understand, these things work in cycles. Typically, it starts in one area, then when it runs its course, they will mitigate to another area, then they will transport themselves to another area. So while the BBB of South Central Louisiana was initially contacted by the Central Chamber of Commerce and happened to pick up on this on the Livingston Parish Sheriff's Office's website and or Facebook page, you might say, well, Clarence, I'm not in Central, I'm not in Livingston, so whew, that's one less thing that I have to worry about. Uh, 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 if it's there in Central today, it will probably be in Lafayette later, it'll be in Lake Charles later, it'll be in New Orleans later. So please, make a mental note in that regard. And that way, if these folks should call you, if you're like me, you'll have a few choice words for them, but just be sure that it's not actually your friends before you let those expletives deleted start flying all over the place. Also, with the overwhelming, just humongous number of Louisianians filing for unemployment. As you're probably aware by now, the Louisiana Workforce Commission has been inundated with calls and inquiries about filing for unemployment here in the state of Louisiana. As a result, the Louisiana Workforce Commission has launched a new video to answer frequently asked questions regarding obtaining unemployment benefits. Louisiana, by the way, is one of only two states that has successfully started sending out the additional $600 in benefits. So tip of the hat to the good folks at the Louisiana Workforce Commission, because while Louisiana may be behind the curve in certain things, again, we are only one of two states in the entire nation 
that so far has already transitioned into sending out checks for that additional $600 in unemployment benefits to the folks that so desperately need it here in our state. Finally, I would like to implore small business owners to take the time to contact your congressional delegation representative and particularly Minority Speaker Nancy Pelosi. In recent memories, Congress, quite frankly, has been playing politics and dragging their feet with replenishing the fund to aid small businesses. It is amazing how out of touch the people we elect to represent us once they get in that echo chamber and that bubble in Washington, D.C., how out of touch they become. Now listen, I understand they're politicians. They're playing politics. That's what they do. But at the end of the day, small business owners are hurting and they need this money ASAP. It galls me, as I'm sure it has many other Americans, to see Nancy Pelosi on late night television, standing in front of her $24,000 freezer, joking about all the designer flavors of ice cream she has in her freezer. All this while American business owners are suffering. Nancy Pelosi, Congress, get off your lazy butts and do what needs to be done to help the people that drive the economic engine of this country. It is despicable. It is beyond belief. And it's one thing for you to be so out of touch with reality. It's one thing for you to be totally out of touch with the people that make this country work. But to get your sorry behind on television and joke about standing in front of your expensive freezer eating your ice cream while people that have worked their you know what's off to start a business and earn an honest day's living are going under by the thousands. Shame on you for playing politics and shame on you for those of us that forget this come election time. I hope that you'll remember, I hope you'll remember come election time, who has stood up for the American people, who stood up for American businesses, and let's send a message that this is not acceptable, and quite frankly, we as Americans are sick and tired of it, and we're not going to stand for it anymore. The only way they will change their ways is if you and I stand up and demand better of them. <sighs> that felt pretty good. And it leaves me just enough time to say, you're right, I will give it to you, now more than ever. You know what, America, we're not perfect, but doggone it from my money, it's the best there is. And God knows there's no place else on his green earth that I'd rather be. Speaking of the good Lord, you do realize by now that he loves you, right? And I hope you know, even if it's in just the smallest of terms, that I do too. Best news you're going to get all day. <laughs> There ain't a doggone thing you can do about either one. I'll make you a deal. Take care of yourselves. Let's take care of each other, and we'll do it again on Wednesday. Tomorrow, Bill Profita and Kevin Gallagher here on the Pelican. God bless.